Alright? Yep. So far good? So far good. Oh. And we have 10 minutes. Alright. And quickly show. Put the button. Yes. First button. So I'm using Climate Consultant. I'm going to choose Phoenix. Anybody remember the weather files format? TMI. Two or three? Yep. And EPW for this one. Okay. So, if you haven't uh, looked at this climate consulting, it's a free software. Please look at it. It gives a lot of information. And we talked about comfort models in the beginning. I'm going to choose ASHA comfort model, but that's what we're always used to. So, 68 degrees and 74 degrees, make note of that. Yep. Oh, uh, one thing to, and there's so many graphs and, and charts in this, in this program. I'm not going to bore you with all of them. Uh, I just want to pick and choose a few. <coughs> this is diurnal range. Why is that important to know? Night flush. Yes. Thank you. Radiation. Why is that important to know? Heat gain. Heat gain. Solar design. Your window design. This will help you design your photovoltaics. How many times in a year I have clouds? Sky cover. Wind velocity. How would this help you? Wind turbines plus natural ventilation plus building orientation plus <laughs> right the problem with this chart is this chart only tells you the average wind speed but it doesn't overlay the temperature of the average wind speed right so why do you need to know the temperature of the wind do you want it or not? Do you want to block it or not? <laughs> okay, why do you know why do you need to know this? Ground temperature. Ground source heat. <laughs> Ground temperature is if you sink your building ten feet, because what are these things? These are uh, that's one point six four feet line, six point five six feet, thirteen feet. If you sink your building, the deeper you go, look at this, the, the change in the, in the Earth's atmosphere, Earth's, Earth, yeah, Earth acts as an insulation, and the variation is not a whole lot compared to 1.6 feet. So you could save a, a boatload of energy just by doing that. Okay, this, these are complicated, just don't worry about it. Okay, why do you need to know this one? We talked about this, to help you find sun angles, and help you block all these unwanted sun. No one angle. No one angle, correct. Okay, this is the most important graph. This helps us understand sunrise and sunset. For every single hour of the day, it tells us the temperature, right? So, right off the bat, you can say winter, summer. The summers are really bad. Look at the nights. Where's the night? Okay, look at the nights. So, can you do night flushing in the summer? Not so much. Not so much. But can you do night flushing here? Look at this. Over the March. Yes, because if, if this is hot, I can take this cool in the night and replace that. That's essentially night flushing. The same thing can happen here. Right? Okay. So I don't have the time to spend a lot on these things, but please take a look at it. Is there a drop or a time where it is too cold outside to do night flushing? Well, as you can see there, it's just January and December, you don't really want to so get festival. Right, right. You don't, because you don't, you don't have heat here. <laughs> the one thing that I missed on, the one thing that I missed on this chart is, this chart only shows the sunrise and the sunset. What is it not showing? 
building what is this? Hour? <laughs> Bingo. It is not showing <laughs> your particular building's operation hours. That could change your design. Sure. Say for instance, if my, if my building is not here at all in the summer for a school, I don't, I don't have to worry about a lot of big sun issues, right? But if it is, then you have to think about that. So the first thing that I would do on a project is print this out and ask my owner how they want to operate the building and overlay that on this to understand my graph, understand my strategies. Okay, the next most important is this very psychrometric chart. Oh no. <laughs> let's, spend, let's spend a couple more, a couple minutes on this. I think it's very important. So, just a quick refresher. Dry bulb temperature here. If you take into account moisture, there's relative humidity right here. Yeah, humidity ratio. And this is the wet bulb temperature. That's the saturation line, right? So these two blue lines represent comfort zone. And what model did we pick? ASHRAE. ASHRAE. So the ASHRAE comfort zone <coughs> depends uh, or assumes that you wear two types of clothing, one during summer and one during heat, uh, winter. So based on the type of clothing, Summer clothing is on the right side. So here's the comfort zone during summer. So you see every single dot is, is the temperature for every single hour. There are 8,760 hours in a year. So 8,760 dots are there. You've established your comfort to be 68 to 74 based on the ASHRAE model. Okay. So that tells me that based on the ASHRAE model, the outside air temperature is only 11% comfortable on the total 8,760 years. 60 hours, correct. So the rest of the 89% is not comfortable in Phoenix. You probably want some barriers. You, you want a lot of barriers. <laughs> so let's see how we can stretch this by different uh, right. different strategies. Okay. Okay. So when a, when a red dot moves into green, we it's comfortable. comfortable. All right, so these are the different strategies here. Sun shading, high thermal mass, blah, blah, blah. What is one thing that you will, you have to have no matter what? Cooling and heating. Will, it, it, will your owner let you not put a cooling and heating system? Not likely. Not likely. <laughs> I'd be out of job. That would not be good. <laughs> so let's go and suggest that one. <laughs> okay. This is... This is mechanical heating okay. and, and humidification. If you do that... Wow. So by clicking on it, what did you... What I just clicked on it. Click on number 16. Click, uh, yeah, click on number 16. Could someone help me? Yeah. Click on... Uh, I'm, just click on number 16 again, please. Yeah, you already did. Okay. So you notice this. 11% comfortable, right? Yeah. You click on number 16 again. 42% com comfortable because I'm, I'm doing conventional heating and this is assuming that I'm controlling the entire 8,760 hours. Your school may not be 8,060 hours. It could be just 4,000. Gotcha. So this is saying if you do conventional heating, yes, you take care of that much. Go ahead and click 15, please. 15. All right. 37, another 37. I don't know why this doesn't add up. It should. Mm -hmm. it's 11 up. And 11? No, it, it, it includes that 11. 40, 37, 11 should be uh, 90. 90. It includes that, but I don't know if it doesn't. Mm -hmm. no, just ignore that for a second. Just erase that, okay? All right, given that we have to do these things, right? Now, let's pick one, one thing at a time. Number two. Okay. Number two. Okay, this says 3,054 3, hours in a year you need to shade your building. Okay? That's 34% of the hours. But why didn't this increase or decrease or anything? Why didn't this... We already had covered it for the heat. Right. 
No, right. no, here's the, here's the thing. The ash rate comfort model is assumed based on a shaded condition. Do, why don't you guys remember that? We talked about that. Right? <laughs> <laughs> the, ash rate, the ash rate comfort model is, is assuming that you are in a shaded place like this. With, with what, how, how, uh, what should be the wind speed? Maximum wind, maximum air velocity? 50 feet. Uh, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30 feet. That is the assumption. Right. So, just to get your 11 person comfortable, you have to be in a shaded place. Otherwise, this doesn't work. So, let's go ahead and click the next one. High thermal mass. Okay, so this tells me that I'm only adding 4.5% by doing high thermal mass. Okay? Wait, right. let's uh, retract it a second. This is slightly controversial because, uh, or slightly confusing because we're not taking into account internal building loads here. This is strictly outside air temperature and how comfortable you are. You can make those things. This is not taking into account that my building will kill, will still keep putting out all these different heat. Okay, so high high thermal mass is only 4.5. Uncheck that, please. High th high thermal mass with night flush. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm gonna go to the next one. From 37, it dropped to 32. So that is that is the impact of night flush on your building. So it saves uh, it saves five percent. Okay. So let's uncheck that. We'll come back to that in a second. Let's uncheck that. All all those. Uh, uncheck. Yeah. 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 Which one you want to go, go to? Go to direct evaporated Five. cooling. Okay, look at that. 28%. Look at what happened to my cooling load. A lot of energy. A lot of energy you can save by direct evaporative cooling. Let's uncheck that. But that only happens. No, so let's, let's understand why. All Hold the time. Let's understand why. Go to uh, uh, check that. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> look at this. So, by, by doing this, by direct <coughs> evaporative cooling, what are we adding to the air? <laughs> If you add moisture to the air, it cools down, and even though it may be like it's soggy, you're still comfortable. I mentioned you have to stretch your comfort a little bit. You know, it, it, it doesn't mean that you have to sacrifice your comfort, you just have to stretch it. I'm stretching yeah. the sun. <laughs> <laughs> right. So uncheck that. You go to two-stage evaporative cooling. What is two-stage evaporative cooling? Indirect. Yes. So uh, an example of that would be our cooling tower designs. So in a typical cooling tower, we just let the let the air uh, you know, absorb moisture. Right? So that's direct evaporative cooling, passively speaking, without using mechanical cooling. But if we use, before that air gets to the cooling tower, if we pre-cool it or preheat it indirectly, or pre-cool pre it indirectly, we're not, direct, uh, we're not directly cooling it, but through, um, heat, through heat, heat exchange, if you, if you cool the air before it enters the cooling tower, then that's two stage. Look at what two stage does. So from now on, every project in Phoenix, we're going to do a cooling tower, right? Thirty-four percent. No. No. Why? Is a lot of maintenance and costly. Okay. Uncheck that. Natural ventilation. Oh, before you check that, I can't stop it. Okay. Don't check that. How many think that will work? How many what? How, how many of you think that natural ventilation will work in Phoenix? Uh, uh, Realistic load. Or, or let's say theoretically, even. Yes. It will work? No. Some will work, but not enough. It's small amount of time to right. make it. Let's go. Check that. Small one for a second. Okay. So, 125 hours a year, you're good. 
right. So uncheck that. Fan force ventilation. Why is natural ventilation not so effective in Phoenix? Two reasons. No wind. No hot air. Right. The air temperature is not so comfortable, uh, and then uh, and the winds are not so effective. But if you do the Let's cut that wind part and you do mechanical uh, suction through fan forced ventilation, it, it helps. Yeah, another 6%. It has 6%. So, this is something that, uh, something to think about because when we have hollow core sl slabs, um, my professor in, at Iowa State has, has done this in Iowa, and it actually works really great. The hollow core slabs, at the end of the hollow core slabs, you could uh, employ some fans and suctions. And, naturally cool it, that cool the mass whenever you have it, get a chance to. Okay, uncheck that. Internal heat gain. Okay, uh, uncheck that again, sorry. So is that the like heaters and... Uh, no, uh, internal heat gain, people, lights, and all the, just a broad assumption here, okay? okay. okay. Internal, the, so look at, look at your heating loads. 42% conventional heating. Okay. You put internal heating. Eighteen percent. So we have a lot of free heat. We have a lot of free heat. That is why our actual energy for heating is so small in the pipe. Okay, let's uncheck that. Let's do this passive or direct gain low mass. What's the difference between high mass and low mass? It's the density of the material, right? The the denser it is, the heavier the mass is, and can store more energy. Light mass is, for instance, okay, I'm gonna wrap this up. Thank you. Quickly. The lighter mass is, for instance, just a porcelain tile or something. It has low density. Uh, so uncheck that and go to passive sort of high mass. So look at this. With internal heat gain and passive sort of direct gain high mass, you can solve the heating problem in, in Arizona. Okay? Wind protection. There's not a whole lot of wind, so there's no, no need to protect the wind. So you can, unlike in other places where you have to protect the north wind, you don't have to worry about it. Yet. And humidification, dehumidification, let's not go into that. So what I, what I want you to understand on this is, this is not going to help you directly design your building. Yes? You get humidification just once, just see what it Okay. Humidification. Yeah, go to humidification. Eight percent. That's humidification. What's the other? Dehumidification. See, that, that only stretches during the summer. The, the only reason I wanted to just take a quick look at that is, that, you know, I, I don't know how many of you have lived in swamp cooler houses mm -hmm. or, or swamp cooler schools when they used to be able to. One of the problems we really started running into and one of the reasons the shift went to air conditioning wasn't just the comfort or the comfort or not. It was allergies. Uh, it was asthma. It was, it, it, you get the, you know, if, you, if your family is tolerant of those, fine. If you're in a school and a third of the students have these other issues, that, that's, that's another factor that really comes in when you start getting aware of So it's a part of that. You can see these things are also. I had a swamp cooler in a horse farm, and you can go up and look inside of it. It's oh, that's terrible. Oh, yeah, it's awful. Our first house here, but I had to go up and clean those suckers and change the pads all the time. Mm -hmm. Okay. okay. So, um, oh, boy. I'm already late. <coughs> Um, can you guys have three, four minutes to go through the quiz? Or? Yes. Okay. All right.